Okay, today we are having a crack at giving every team in the AFL a mid-season report card, a grade, if you will. We're just going to talk about each team in the league, probably alphabetically, that seems a good way to do it, and uh, basically assess how they're going on their preseason expectations. I've got Druzy here from the Druzy YouTube channel. And let's start off with the Crows, Drews. What do you think, how do you think the Crows would be assessing where they're at right now in season 2024, considering they finished 10th last year, just missed out from that uh, controversial score review and they currently sit fifth last if i'm not mistaken no they're in the bottom four sorry what have you made of the crows f i'm gonna give the crows an f they have been stinking it up for a side that was such a high octane scoring side last year they just can't move the footy uh defensively they're getting exposed every week joel Amati kicked nine on them uh midfield they haven't found their right mix yet they're they're a bottom four side after being a top eight contender it's got to be an f Interesting, the percentage is still good. Like they're still able to put scores on the board. Obviously, defensively they haven't looked great. I think the midfield connection. I feel like it's a case of growing pains for the Adelaide Crows. It's like they hit this level of expectation now and completely haven't stepped up. I'd probably go with F. I think if you're in the bottom four, I think you're, I think you're bang on there. We'll move to the Brisbane Lions now. Another team that probably will be unhappy with where they are, considering they were the runners up last year. Like a kick, one straight kick from being premiers. Currently sit 13th, bearing in mind they have played one less game with 26 premiership points, but a percentage of 116. What do you think the Lions would be... How do you think they'd be feeling internally about their uh, their season so far? I feel like the first half... So the first quarter of the season, very disappointed. Started 0-3, didn't they? And then, yeah, had some disappointing losses in there. But now they have started to find like their best form again. Neil McCluggage, um, Danaher and Hipwood are playing to their best. Given where they were at, it's probably a fail, but I feel like they're on the right path. So I want to give them a C minus. Yeah, it's an interesting way to frame it because you look at between the Brisbane Lions and the Adelaide Crows, there's only two wins basically separating, two and a half. Um, but you do have this sense that the, the Lions are on the way up. If you look at their last five, they're three wins, one draw, one loss. Adelaide have won one of their last five. Um but I feel like if you just do it on ladder position, let's say they win their next game. If they win their next game, um, they move up to 30 points. They might actually be very close to the eight. I'm going to give them probably a D minus, to be honest. So I'm a little bit harsher on them than you because we, we are assessing on, you know, if, you, if you're total Lions fan, this is where you're going to be after 13 games. They'd be like, yeah. what the fuck? So yeah. I'll be harsh on them, but I do think they are in a much more salvage, salvageable position than the Adelaide Crows. I'm actually going to, um, let me just change that then to a D plus because they're positively going in the right direction, but it's been disappointing. We'll move to Carlton now. This one might be a little bit more positive. Um, they currently mm. sit second on the ladder and last year obviously made a prelim, narrowly fell short against the Brisbane Lions. How do you think they'd be assessing where they're at currently? Yeah, they'd be pretty happy. I think the scariest thing about Carlton is I actually don't think they've played their best footy yet and they've still had mm. quite a great season. Um, they've had a lot of injuries, so they still haven't played their best footy with their best team on the park. Um, but yeah, they'd be stoked. I think an A, A minus areas because I think there's room to improve. But it's pretty much like, yeah, they'd they'd be stoked with where they're at. I think I agree with A minus actually. Um, you know, again, we're assessing in the middle of the buy rounds, but I assume if they win the next game, they'll be clearly an outright second. Collingwood's played one more game. If they're currently the se- the, the second best team in the comp in theory, and the best challengers are Sydney. I think you've got to be happy with that, considering how good Sydney are. And I do agree with you. I think there's a bit of gas in the tank for Carlton to really improve in the second half of the year. This video is brought to you proudly in a paid partnership with BetterHelp, which is a platform that matches you with a credentialed therapist who is trained to listen and give helpful, unbiased advice. Now, the idea of starting therapy may be a little bit daunting. There are some people who maybe are a little bit uncomfortable with the face-to-face interaction. And in some cases as well, you might not feel like you're going to be matched with the right therapist for you because they might not live in your area. But that's the great thing about BetterHelp because you can set up your therapy sessions either through phone call, video chat, or if you prefer text messaging, whatever's the most comfortable for you, it's super convenient. To get started in the process, all you have to do is click either the link in the description or you go to betterhelp.com forward slash true footy. It takes you to a questionnaire and you fill that out so that they can assess your specific needs. In most cases, they will then match you with a therapist within 48 hours. You can then book your therapy sessions at a time that is convenient for you. And if you find that you're matched with someone that is 
isn't quite the right fit, you do have the ability to switch to a different one at no additional cost. So if you think BetterHelp might be the right fit for you, like I said, you go to the link in the description or you can go to betterhelp.com forward slash true footy. Now clicking that link does support the channel, but also gets you 10% off your first month with BetterHelp so you can be matched with a therapist who can listen and help. Now let's talk about Collingwood here. They currently sit third. It's been a topsy-turvy season for them. Really hard to really get a feel for them and the injury crisis now and they're still winning games in dramatic fashion. How do you think Collingwood would feel about where they're at? Well, they're in the top four now, aren't they? So They're third um, with having yeah. an extra game. That is crazy. Like To think that they started 0-3 and they've like, fast-forward a couple of months and they're third. That is just bonkers um i would say collingwood would have a b plus from where they were last year because of the start if you take that start away it's probably an a but um yeah i'd go b plus i will give them a c plus i think i think you if you assess the first three games they were quite poor i think they've rescued their season as well as they possibly could have considering the injuries they've had uh, but if we're looking at it in totality, you know, I'm trying to predict what the, the ladder will be, let's say, in a game, in one week's time where everyone's played the same amount of games. They're probably just outside the four, maybe. If they're in touching distance by the end of the season, they'll be pretty pleased with that because I think Collingwood could win anywhere, anytime against anyone. Uh, but I think they would still prefer to have started the year better and be in a slightly better position. So I'll say C+. Mm. Plus. Fair. Now, We'll move to Essendon now. This is another interesting team. Uh, I didn't see this sort of form from them coming. They currently sit fourth, uh, again, with a game in hand, so probably will go ahead of Collingwood if they win that. What do you think Essendon, or how do you think they should be graded? I, now I think that Collingwood should be like a B-. minus. <laughs> so now I'm thinking like, how oh, Essendon have come up. I've been very surprised with Essendon's year, Jesse. Uh, I predicted them to finish in the bottom four, and they are proving me wrong. So, yeah, they've been fantastic. Nick Martin, Sammy Durham have really lifted this year. Yeah, they're playing good footy. Their defense is sound. Attack is good. Yeah, I'd give them a B plus, I reckon, Essendon. But, like, the last two weeks have been pretty shitey. So, up until this point, B plus. But... Yeah, I don't know. How, how do you rate them? Yeah, I, I'm probably going to give them an A, to be honest. I think I didn't rate their chances highly, not because they didn't rate their best 22. I was really concerned about the malaise we saw at the end of last year. And um, sometimes teams carry that into the season, sometimes they don't. Could that be a vulnerability for them in the second half of the year? Maybe not. I think Brad Scott's a pretty good coach. But if we're assessing just the first half of the season, I think they couldn't have done too much better. They Eight wins, four losses, and a draw. Um, the percentage at 100 is interesting. They probably really need to learn how to put their scores on the board. They're getting inside 50s. They're not scoring well. But they sit you know, in the top four currently. So I'm going to give them an A. I think they'll be stoked with that. We're up to this pesky little team called Fremantle now. Where do Fremantle sit? They're eighth on the ladder with a really healthy percentage. Despite the fact they just got pumped, the percentage is still 111. That's impressive. What have you thought about Fremantle so far? I think like for the most part, we've been competitive every week other than the Bulldogs game and the West Coast game was a bit of a mulligan. Um, oh, was it? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't was. count, I guess. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it doesn't count. It's only that derby, bro. Um, mm. But other than that, like we've been competitive every week. Um, defensively, really solid. Midfield is humming. I think we just need to fine-tune the forward line. I'd give Frio a B. It's been overall positive. We're, what, one win, maybe a win and a half out of the top four. So I would say a B, and I'm happy with that. I think a B is about right. Like, if I'm being honest, I didn't really think they were going to play finals this year, and they're in a position to, so it's got to be a pr- certainly above C. Um, yeah, B. You, you definitely wouldn't say A. I think there's been enough disappointment in there to, to bring it down because, you know, yeah. against the Bulldogs, against West Coast. Um, uh, again, the Sydney one's hard to assess. There was a lot going on in that game. Um, but if you were to uh, like uh, judge them on the result, it wasn't great. And their best football has been really good. And they're quite defensively dour. A number of all Australians contenders. Yeah, I'll go with B. I think that's fair. Even the Sydney game, though, like if we're talking about that, like it was just we could not hit the scoreboard. Like contest was good. On another day, we kick straight and it's a different game. But anyway, we'll move on. No, I get your point. That's fair. We'll talk about the Cats, though. They started this season on fire. Seven wins. We're all like Geelong's back. They've dropped four of their last five. Well, five of their last six, actually. But they're still sixth. What do you think? What do you think of Geelong? Well, I think six weeks ago you'd give them an A plus, and the last six oh, yeah. week you'd give them an F. So I think a C. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> Find the but midpoint. Very good. Very shit. A C. <laughs> yeah, it's it's so hard to. We're trying to do this as to capture this point in time, but assess the season 
generally like based on the numbers to some extent rather than like the form line right now um, because if you consider they've dropped five of the last six yeah there's a very negative taste in your mouth about that I think when you consider last year I think they're a club with a lot of expectation and they missed the finals last year lots of injuries this year they probably expected to come back into the finals internally so I'm assessing that like based on their expectations they're in the finals. I would probably, long-winded way of saying, probably about a C as well. Because I don't feel like they're in the top top group of contenders at the moment, that's for sure. No. But they're in the mix, and they, they could come good by the end of the year. We've got the two expansion teams. Let's start with the Gold Coast Suns. This is already just about their best ever season. They currently sit 10th. Mm-hmm. They've never finished higher than 12th. Um, how do you think you'd grade the Gold Coast Suns? I'd say B+, plus because Gold Coast are not an easy team to beat anymore at all. Like They actually have made metric on a bit of a tough away trip absolutely slapped Geelong um, beat Essendon who have been a really good side as well um, we've got them this week and I'm actually pooing my pants so yeah I'm gonna give them a B plus probably agree with that I think yeah you consider expectations and if they're on track for their best ever season it's you know it feels wrong to give them like a C or anything like that so I'd probably say B plus they're showing some really good signs and a lot of their best performers are at the start of their prime. So they're in a good spot. And I think the the start to the Hardwick era has been really positive for the Suns. They just need to hopefully run out the entire season. Uh, What about their younger brother, the GWS Giants? They have been a little bit topsy-turvy as well. Some good form, particularly early. Excuse me, has been a bit of lackluster lately. Mm. And they are coming off a prelim where they, you know, were so close to knocking Collingwood out, which is crazy. Um, How would you assess them? They're fifth, by the way. GWS, I think... The footy that they've played, their best footy has been better than anyone's and they'd be very happy with that. I would give GWS a B. I know the last month hasn't been great, but they just beat Port Adelaide and I think they're going to launch into the second half of the year. Just got Josh Kelly back. I think they'd be pretty happy. Um, I'll give them a B. Nice. I agree with your assessment. I have this feeling also they're going to come hard in the second half of the year. I think that's kind of just how GWS operate. They're pretty good at running out seasons and when they get to finals they generally play well and I think they have a brain that stacks up in finals however if we're assessing just on what we've seen so far I think they'd be a little bit flat you know I think they were, they're in touch with the top four for sure could get there I still expect they will but they're not quite the full product right now a little bit of a form slump I'm going to give them a C I think this is about what they would have hoped for if not maybe a little bit below what they'd hoped for who yeah. we got next we got the Hawthorne footy club they're a tough one to assess aren't they my god Currently sit 12th on some sort of form run. What is it, like five of the last six? Uh, maybe it's better than that. They're 7-7 seven and seven with a percentage of 92 and in 12th spot. And I feel like they're one of the best teams in the comp on current form. What do you reckon? Yeah, it's funny. Like, where, where do they sit? Like, the one spot below Melbourne, right? All of the talk about Melbourne, and you know, this is expectation of where they were last year and what their expectations were coming into this year. Melbourne have had the worst year ever, their brand doesn't stack up, they're so easy to beat, yada, yada, well, whatever the narrative is around Melbourne at the moment. And then you look at Hawthorne, who are the spot below, and it's all excitement and up the Hawks and how exciting their attacking players are and the versatility they have down back. Um, yeah, Hawthorne have had a great year uh, in the last month and a half, but before that, they couldn't get a win. So, uh, tough one. I reckon C+. Plus. Wow. They're, they're a very exciting team at the moment, but God, that first quarter of the year was bad. Like, mm. Sam Mitchell was not happy with how Hawthorne were playing at the start of the year. Now, Will Day's back into the side, um, and it's it's really, yeah, swung their season around. Just as a side note, Will Day commented on my TikTok talking about how poor Hawthorne's midfield <laughs> is, and so, did, <gasps> and so did the Hawthorne Football Club. What did he say? He just left a thumbs up. Oh, man. It was like and that time you called Josh Kennedy a pussy. Yeah. <laughs> and Hawthorne just commented, you need to update this. Um, anyway. That's a good response. That's a good response. It's the same argument as Geelong for Hawthorne. Really, but it's like flipped. So yeah, I'm going to give him a C plus. Positive, but that first quarter of the year can't be forgotten. I see that angle. I'm going to go A plus or A. I'm going to give him an A. To, oh. I'll go different. I agree with you. But the thing is, Hawthorne is the second youngest and second least experienced team. If we measure it on expectations, I don't think they should be compared to a demon side that is got yeah. a, has got an aging list and is at the top of the premiership cycle and really should be doing better than they are. The thing is, with a young side rebuilding, unlike Geelong, 
unlike Geelong, I, I think you can kind of ignore the form slump of a young side early if if it was then followed by a dominant run of form. And maybe, they, you know, they, I don't think their fixture has been incredibly hard. I mean, they, they beat some good teams, they beat GWS. I think that, that performance against uh, the Power was probably one of the most compelling, and that was the one they lost. I'm going to give them an A because I don't think they should be playing as well as they are, and therefore they'll be stoked with the, where they're at, my personal uh, opinion. Yeah, you should make the uh, argument first for the rest of the video because I feel like I make an argument and then you slap it down. So so you you, you go ahead. <laughs> yeah, that's that's interesting, Drewzy, but perhaps in a more real and perhaps correct sense, this is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We've got the Demons now. Um, they started the season fairly well and it has been a rotting fart of a month since. <laughs> um, you know, headlined by some losses. I think, you know, the Fremantle loss was their worst of the year, I would, I would say, off the top of my head. I, I think there's no disrespect to Fremantle. I actually tipped Fremantle in that game. But to, to be so uncompetitive is was the first alarm bell for me. Mm. They currently sit 11th um, with 100%, and now this isn't relevant to this analysis, but Petrarca being out for the year is a massive blow and probably ruins their season. How would you grade Melbourne? Also lost to West Coast, and God... Really? Well, I, I don't think they were pathetic <laughs> against us. They obviously weren't uh, playing their best footy. Like they had but effort, think, but their their brand didn't stack up and show up. Absolutely, at all. absolutely, yeah. I would say the D's have had a D. I'll give a D to the D's. Just a disappointing year, struggling for goals still. I think their midfield's getting a bit jaded. Oliver isn't the player that he once was. Petrarca out hurts. They're a bit lost at the moment, the Ds. I reckon you could put a line through this year for them. Not to say that they can't bounce back next year. So they've still got a lot of quality, but yeah, I'd give them a D. Yeah, I think, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to remove like the recency bias um, from this because I think the best way to do it is just to generally do it on what they've produced and try and ignore the fact that the last month has been really pathetic. I think if you look at the ladder, though, they're only one win behind Port. They're one win behind Geelong. They're two points behind Fremantle. Um, the percentage has taken a hit. So are they that far off where they'd hoped? Maybe not. I'm basically considering is it an F or not. And I'm going to say it's probably not an F. I'll agree with a D uh, on balance. LMNOPQRS. The next team is Richmond, I think. No, it's North Melbourne, sorry. We've got the, the North Melbourne Football Club, another team who in the last two weeks might have just shifted this rating. Would you agree with that? Yeah, got a win. We're pretty competitive against Collingwood. I wouldn't say it's an F or a D. I'd probably say they're at about as expected. C minus C is probably where I'd have the ruse. What about you? It, I, I find them actually tricky to rate because I personally thought Wooden Spoon was going to be locked in this year, just about locked in, depending on how bad West Coast turned out. And they're about that. Um, and I think if you look at like the agent experience that the, the team has had, like I've banged on about all year to justify this position, should we have expected more? I made a whole video about this. And the answer is probably no. That being said, would they be happy with the first 12 games of the season or 11 games of the season? Definitely not. No, I think they'd be very flat with it. And then, you know, the last two weeks, I think, particularly the Collingwood one, I think that was more impressive than the West Coast win by far. Mm. Um, even though they, they coughed up the lead. That to get 40 or 55 points up, that's absurd. So I think that's just lifted them from an F, I think. I mean, if it, had they been winless at mid-season, you'd have to say F. And they're on track for two wins again. Oh, D minus. D minus yeah. is where I've taught myself into just because, you know, if you flipped the season around and they did the second half was like the first and they had two wins and they're exactly where they were the last two years. So I don't yeah. think that's a pass. So D minus, but things are looking good to be fair to them. It's like, it's been a pretty good fortnight for them. Now we are up to Richmond, the team just above them. Injury crisis, second last on the ladder. Some good footy and some good wins. They beat the Crows away. They beat the Swans. They're the only team to do it. How do you rate Richmond? Oh, God. Yeah, it's a tough one because they haven't had their best team out on the park. They are doing worse than I think their fans would have expected, at least. They do get pumped, the Tigers. I'm going to give them a D-. It's been a disappointing year, hasn't it? It has. I, again, I think there's there's external expectations of where Richmond were going to be this year and there's what the fans thought. And we, we try to remove itself from what the fans thought because I think Richmond fans have become accustomed to their team bouncing back and um, it didn't happen this year, but I don't think the list is in a great shape to be really contending anyway. You, you couple that with the injury crisis that they had, it's so hard to assess them. I've actually been impressed. Other than, you know, there was a horrible fortnight, big loss to the dogs, big loss to the Lions. I've actually really respect the way they've come back from that. And they've beaten 
you know, Sydney, like that's ridiculous, even if it was before things got really bad. So I'll, I'll say D plus. I, I'm, I'm kind of positive on what they've produced, considering I don't think they've been very well equipped. Yeah, we'll go with D plus. Who else we got? We are up to the S teams. Uh, let's start with St. Kilda. This one is probably not going to be a great grade. Uh, what have you made of the Saints who have slipped from 6th yeah. to what is currently 14th? What positives can you take from this season for St. Kilda, to be honest? Like, Wanganine Miller has been good. Um, Darcy Wilson. Yeah, Darcy Wilson. Mm. Uh, I think the, the young talent's good. Yeah, where they were last year and the expectations they have, I think you've probably got to give them a D minus. Mm. Like, very close to F. I haven't been sold on the Saints at all. And I was speaking to a St. Kilda fan the other day, and he was saying, like, out of all the years that he's watched St. Kilda, he doesn't feel... Like, he feels more lost than ever with where they're at. They're hard to watch. So, yeah, I'm going to give him a D-. minus. I might even say F, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, I'm a guy who put them sixth in my ladder prediction. I thought they'd back it up. They have a mature team that has a, you know, well-respected coach. Who they don't really have? <laughs> Who's he well? Yeah. By? <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're a bit removed from his successful period, particularly at Sinclair and, and at Fremantle. Like, it hasn't been good since. But I mean, last he had a great time he made season finals was nine years ago. Yeah, when Fremantle took on like the longest rebuild. Oh, well, they, they made finals uh, last year, bro. Oh, yeah, true. So, yeah, if you that. <laughs> leave that um, out. <laughs> the last time he won a final. I know what you mean. That would have been against Sydney in the qualifying final of 2015, I reckon. Yeah, um, I was there. Yeah, the glory days. Um, so, yeah, the St. Kilda, I just think based on expectations, they don't really have too many excuses for falling away. It's not a new coach. Um, it's a mature team. Um, I know they've dealt with some injuries, but injuries across the board are pretty high, and I think St. Kilda has been really poor against expectations. So I'm, I'm going to say F. They should have been aiming to play finals this year, and I think they've now locked themselves into those bottom five teams. Well, let's go with the other S team, the Sydney Swans. Um, are we thinking D? Yeah, I'll give them an F. <laughs> We're funny guys. Subscribe yeah. to my channel. A plus. A double plus. Incredible. Uh, their midfield yeah. is humming. Uh, kicking goals for fun out of there. They've got unlimited socks up forward. Grundy has been an outstanding acquisition. So has James Jordan. Taylor Adams, they've come in and done a job as well. So they've added three guys that have come in. Filled great roles. A double plus. Can't speak any more highly. They're head and shoulders above everyone at the moment. I agree. They, uh, well, they're literally 12 points ahead of Carlton, who are second, and they've played the same amount of games. Their percentage is 150, and they have, you know, if you slice it one certain way, you could probably have like a quarter of the South, uh, all Australian team be Sydney players. They've just been so damn good. And For sure. one outlier, a loss against Richmond. It's almost like almost ominous the fact that they're so far ahead the best team because there's been several years where that's happened and the team hasn't won the premiership. So yeah. you know, w- wouldn't um, wouldn't get too confident yet, but they are clearly you know a plus. Like I don't think it's too much. You couldn't they could have done too much more. Absolutely. Now we have my beloved West Coast Eagles. Um, another team's probably a little bit tricky to assess. Um, you know, there's been some really good form, and then I think particularly in the last three weeks, there's been a little bit of a return to maybe what uh, some people expected of West Coast this year and uh, it's been a little bit disappointing. Um, what have you made of the Eagles? What did you think of them in the Derby? Come on, man. Hello? <laughs> I can't hear any crying. Oh, God. Why did you have to do that to me to remind me of that? I just thought back to my live stream and how much enjoyment you got out of that. Oh, that was so good. I went back and watched it yesterday. <laughs> no, you didn't. I did. <laughs> I was feeling blue. I needed something to perk me up. <laughs> did you actually? Yeah. <laughs> I'd say West Coast have been better than a lot of people would have thought. The guys that have come back in and Harley Reid um, has been yeah incredible what he's been able to achieve so far in his short career. Jake Waterman's been a massive improvement. Um, and then, yeah, just like those experienced guys, Barras, Duggan, um, McGovern are back. So, I don't know. I think I'd probably give it a C plus because i reckon you're moving in the right direction and you're probably like where you'd expect i think that's a good assessment i I probably was going to say c um you know my logic for west coast avoiding the spoon this year was that we'd have a better injury run that's what's happened and naturally we've generally been pretty competitive even some of the losses even some of the big losses i feel like there's been a big difference in the way that west coast have played in terms of Mm. actually trying i know that sounds ridiculous but i'm being honest um, so other than the last three weeks, I think, I think this is about what I expected. You know, it, it would probably be a more glowing endorsement or I would be able to endorse them more heavily if more of the young talent was driving the improvement. 
as it stands, other than Harley Reid, and you know, we're getting a little bit of growth from the youth. It's not like we're Hawthorne, where a lot of the young players are actually A grade. So that's probably the only caveat I have against West Coast. I think this is about right. I'm hoping for a good second half of the year. Talking about that effort, like compared to last year, like you gave Sydney a good shake. You've beaten Mm. Melbourne, who have been a top four side for the last four years. Like, yeah, you've definitely improved on last year. So that's why you get the plus on the C for me. I like it. I'll take it. Take it and run. Let's talk about the Bulldogs. Another really hard team to assess. The final team to assess. Um, You've got a bitter Bulldog taste in your mouth. Yeah. Gross. Um, after what Bond and Pelly and company did to you on the weekend, Drews. Um, <laughs> he gave me the flu. <laughs> <laughs> flu of the rectum. Um, so the Bulldogs currently sit ninth. Their percentage is 120, thanks to the men in purple. Um, yeah, what do you what do you think of them? They have played an extra game. It's what been flu in the rectum. What do you think of the Bulldogs? I think they're a hard team to assess. Um, go. Yeah, I think sort of four weeks ago Luke Beveridge's job was on the on the chopping block and it could have been one bad result away from him getting sacked like I thought they were done for all love and money the dog's pressure around the ground has definitely lifted that's one thing I noticed at the game on the weekend um and their midfield craft has definitely improved they dominated us out of the center which has been our strongest point all year I just think they've been so inconsistent and they're expected to be like in a premiership window with the Bont in his prime. So, God, it's a tough one to assess. I'm going to have to go C plus at this point because their last month of footy has been pretty good. Yeah, it's a tricky one measuring the Bulldogs' expectations. And I, I think there was this narrative preseason, and perhaps like I'll, I'll put my hand up and say I probably was part of this, where I thought you know the talent they had, they should have been competing. And that's, that comes with that expectation on Luke Beveridge. I did a video like a month ago actually looking – more deeply at where they're at as a list. And I realized, like, maybe we shouldn't be expecting them to be top four. I think they've got a lot of young gun players that are about to hit their prime. Like, Norton's yeah. young. Hugo Hagen's young. Like, Sanders, you get excited about these young talents. Wait, Bailey man, Smith's an iffy one. He hasn't played. Exactly. Good, good shouts. And then there's Bonton Pelly. So if we, if we look at it with a bit more realistic expectation about the Bulldogs, maybe we should expect them to be a finalist, and they're probably in touching distance. Now they're not in the eight, but I will give them a C because some of their best footy has at least given the belief. And I think mm. that's maybe a, a little like variable in this and intangible is now we I feel like the Bulldogs can play. It's just about consistency. They beat the Giants in Sydney. So they can take that into next uh, to the second half of the year with some optimism. Um, so long story short, I think I think C about right. I don't think they should yeah. be stoked, but I think there's enough there to um, to give it a pass. All right, Drews, thanks so much for your time. This has been a good chat. Uh, everyone in the comments, let me know what you think of our comments and, and the grades we've given your team. Uh, anything you agree with, disagree with, do go check out my good friend Drewsy's YouTube channel, Drewsy, and uh, he makes plenty of good AFL content. Drewsy, it's been a pleasure, my friend. Good is arguable, but I'll take it and run. Thanks, guys. We'll see you in the next one.